AI-powered coding tools like Cursor, GitHub Copilot, ChatGPT have all exploded in popularity recently. And there's one question on everyone's minds. Is it really making developers more productive or is this all just hype and wishful thinking? We're gonna dive into both sides of this debate today and you're gonna hear about studies showing no real productivity boost or gains amongst developers, but also industry reports praising gains in the exact opposite of what some of these other studies are showing. So it's a pretty polarized debate. There seems to be conflicting information. So we're gonna unpack that in today's video. Stefan here from App Stuff. let's go ahead and dive in. So first up guys, we are gonna take a look at this recent controlled trial conducted by the Model Evaluation and Threat Research Organization. The link for this is in the description. And basically they are using two groups to study the effects of AI productivity on experienced developers. One group in the study used AI tools like Cursor and Claude and ChatGPT, and the other group did not. And the expected result was that the group using AI would be 24% faster or more productive than the group that was not using AI tools. However, the results of the study were quite astonishing they actually showed that AI slowed down experienced open source developers. So if you guys wanna read through the details of this, like I said, the link is in the description, but we have a post from Tech Radar here that kind of sums it all up. So we see that developers actually spent 19% more time on tasks when using AI, which is pretty crazy. So they spent extra time prompting, waiting, reviewing the code, and then fixing the AI generated code. And we can see here that only 44% of the AI generated code was accepted by the experienced developers. So those results are pretty surprising. And the funny part is developers still feel that work is easier when using AI, despite the fact that it took them longer. So I think developers are just inherently so lazy that because they see something writing code for them, they're like, oh, this is better. But the data actually shows that it's not. So this is not just opinion, this is information coming from actual studies conducting the effects of AI on developer productivity. And I can personally attest to this. Sometimes it feels like you're going faster, but if you were to actually perform a study like this and try to write the same feature twice, or maybe try to write very similar features twice and use AI one time and not use it the other. Um, I spend a lot of time prompting the AI I spend a lot of time telling it to fix things. Sometimes it gives me back code that doesn't even compile. You also spend time waiting for it to give you code. And if you don't have an integrated AI tool into your development environment, you have to spend time like copy and pasting things as well. So it feels faster, but you know, data is showing that it's not and the data doesn't lie. So the bottom line here is that for experienced developers, AI can actually introduce friction, extra overhead, without real speed or productivity gains. So this might work better for junior devs who might not know enough to correct the code and might just get something working and say, okay, this is good. But for more experienced developers, you recognize when you are building code that won't scale properly, that might introduce bugs later on, or that might be difficult to debug later on. So for experienced developers, which is the only group of developers I think really matters here because they have the experience to know if code is good or bad, um, this actually doesn't work that well. Next up, we are gonna look at this article that examines Dora, which is the Google-backed DevOps Research and Assessment Program. And they are reporting limited gains from AI and platform engineering. So these numbers are super interesting and the takeaway from the study is super interesting as well. So let's take a look at the numbers here. So 76% of the developers are using AI for at least one professional responsibility. So 24% of them aren't even using it. Um, and they're seeing a 7.5% increase in documentation quality, a 3.4% increase in code quality, and a 3.1% increase in the speed at which code is being reviewed. So overall, on the surface, those are all good things. It seems to generally be improving uh, productivity and speed for things like documentation quality, code quality, and review speed. However, the next part of this is super interesting. So... The global survey also finds there's been a 1.5% decrease in delivery throughput and a 7.2% decrease in delivery stability. So it's essentially just writing bad code faster, right? It seems like it has these productivity gains and then later on things just break. So essentially, Nathan Harvey, the Dora lead developer and advocate at Google Cloud, said it's not clear what the root cause of those declines are, but it's the 
uh, probably the code written by AI platforms needs to be fixed before applications are deployed in a production environment. And this part's also interesting. 39% of the developers in the group have little to no trust in AI generated code. So essentially AI is just writing shitty code. And on the surface, it makes things seem more productive and seem like they're going quicker. But in the reality, it just causes more problems later on down the line. So these concerns don't mean organizations should abandon AI, like there is a chance that this gets better. Um, but software engineering teams should focus their initial efforts on areas where AI provides a clear benefit. So it's clear, for example, when properly applied, AI can reduce toil, whatever that means. But any code being generated should be closely reviewed and tested. So it's like at that point, why even use it, dude, if you just have to freaking review it with a microscope when you could just write it yourself and trust that your developer is writing the code better than the AI will and you're not opening yourself up to these like little nuanced bugs that are essentially just harder for you to diagnose, dissect and like fix because the AI wrote the code. So it's like when you tell an engineer to go and debug the code it's like way easier if the engineer that wrote that code or the team that wrote that code goes and debugs it as opposed to the AI that wrote the code. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, maybe they reviewed the code, but if they really reviewed the code, why are there bugs? You know, I don't know. Bugs are always there, but I thought that was super interesting that it's uh, making people more productive, but then they see a decrease in delivery stability and actual throughput. Next up, we're going to look at Atlassian's DevX report reporting yet another unexpected paradox here for software developers. So it looks like they're saving over 10 hours a week, but then they're still overworked and losing an equal amount of time due to organizational inefficiencies, whatever that means. So essentially, it's AI makes them more productive in some areas, but then causes problems in others. And those things effectively cancel each other out and eliminate the gains that the AI gave them in the first place. So these organizational inefficiencies are things with like meetings and communications and unclear direction, which is costing them more time and just wiping out the gains they experience in the first place. So in effect, AI seems to help, but only when underlying workflows are optimized, if not teams gain nothing. So this comes back to this foundational and central question that I keep asking myself when I think about AI in my life as a developer. Is it actually making me more productive or not? And it seems like it's not, right? Like it seems like on the surface it might because it's like, oh cool, something's writing code for me and I didn't have to type all of that out myself. Great. But then all of the problems that come as a result of using this stuff seem to just wipe out all of the, the, th like the gains in productivity that you got from it. So it seems like it's just not worth it. Like, and I, this makes me think about the future of AI and the direction of AI. Like I'm like, well, we'll, they, it get better? Like, isn't that the whole point? Isn't AI supposed to effectively be able to learn from itself and learn from the mistakes that it makes when you tell it it made a mistake? It's like, my thought is that if it was going to get better, it would have happened already because of the rate at which AI is supposed to be able to learn and adapt, right? So I'm not sure how much better this stuff is going to get. And I'm just like wondering about what the future of this is going to be. Like, is AI essentially just like a gimmick is it all just hype? Kind of like what the Vision Pro with Apple was or like the whole augmented reality space. Like nobody gives a shit about that. And it was like flaunted as like the next big thing. And obviously that was a complete flop, right? And it's like, you got to wonder if AI is just going to be the next augmented reality. And, you know, you have people like Mark Zuckerberg literally spending insane amounts of money hiring people. Like they're give, giving out pay packages of up to $300 million over four years. And this just seems like it's literally just a race between all of these big tech CEOs and companies to see who can build the most useful, useless tool. So it's like kind of like Ray-Ban Meta versus Apple Vision Pro, right? It's like these companies spend billions of dollars developing these things. And then just nobody cares about them. And it's like, it seems like the tech space is just full of people trying to come up with these new and innovative things, but there's just not really much there, right? Like, it seems like we've squeezed all the juice out of this fruit here, right? Like, I don't know where tech is going to go from here. And it seems like AI could be the thing that takes us to that next level, but we might literally just have nothing left to gain at this point anymore. Like obviously that 
sounds limited and potentially naive. Like what's life going to be like in a hundred years, right? Like, are we going to have flying cars and teleportation devices? Who knows? But is AI how we get there or is this just another gimmick? And like, it's crazy because you have people like the NVIDIA CEO saying kids shouldn't even learn how to code anymore. They should just leave it up to AI. Well, it's like, dude, um, your foot's in your mouth now because AI just isn't that good at writing code, right? Like you need experienced engineers in that equation. You need a human component in this whole system to verify that the code is good or else it just breaks and it's just not scalable. Another interesting thing we're seeing with a lot of these AI startups is they start up fast, but then they just fail miserably pretty quickly because they just can't scale. And you have people writing code that's just really bad and it might work for like a simple MVP or prototype, but then when you actually try to scale, it just all falls apart because it's not built on a solid foundation. This article on Medium was really interesting too. It said 99% of AI startups will be dead by 2026. So it basically compares the AI, AI to the uh, internet boom in 99 and 2000. So it's basically just saying labels have changed, but the logic hasn't. AI powered is the new dot com. Startups pitch such rappers, but this time many don't even pretend to own the tech they're built on. So you essentially just have this house of cards where it's like these rapper apps that only rely on OpenAI. OpenAI relies on Microsoft. Microsoft needs NVIDIA and NVIDIA owns the chips that powers it all. So essentially this guy's like, no one's in charge, everyone's exposed and no one's acting like that's a problem. So very well said. Um, another problem that we have here is most so-called AI powered tools are just a pretty interface wrapped around OpenAI's API. So you're just having all of these apps pop up and websites pop up that are really just a pretty UI and they essentially just use ChatGPT to power all of their functionality, right? So it's just like these aren't real products. They're prompt pipelines stapled to a UI. Like I couldn't agree with that more. Like almost every app you see that uses AI just uses ChatGPT as the backend. Nobody's building out their own uh, LLMs like that. So you just get some transcript, process a few hard-coded prompts, like summarize this, turn it into a tree, generate a LinkedIn post, output, formatted text in boxes. No backend, no IP, just API calls on Rails. So another interesting article, check this one out too. Let me know what you guys think about all of this stuff in the comments. Where do you think AI is headed? Do I sound crazy? Like, is it a gimmick? Is it all hype? Is it the future? Where's tech going? Let me know what you guys think. We're at a pretty big inflection point, I think, in the technical industry. And uh, it's super interesting to have conversations around this and hear what people think. So drop a comment below, like this video, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Stefan here saying peace out.